For years, Humboldt Elementary in Northeast Portland had failed. Many of its kids went on to middle school, years behind in academics. The reputation of Humboldt was that it's high poverty, minority students, living in the hood, substitute teachers didn't want to come here because the kids are wild. Achievement was very low. There were low expectations. But just a really negative, depressing, difficult place. By 1997, matters had become so bad, the district decided to take action, shut the school down, and reconstitute it. They removed all of the teachers, they changed the administrators, and they started over again from scratch. So to a degree, it's a matter With funding from a federal program called Reading First, Humboldt's teachers embraced a daunting challenge to make Humboldt a school where every child would learn to read. All students small group time, not just bench time. Reading First, part of the No Child Left Behind program, is a nationwide effort to ensure that all students become successful readers by the end of third grade. You say, Lucky! I say, Err. You say, Err. Lucky says, Lucky! You say, Lucky! I say, It funds programs that are based on the science of how children learn to read. There are five main parts to reading. Okay. You know, we're going to sound it out together. The first is phonemic awareness. The ability to hear the sounds or phonemes yes. that make up words. Boys and girls, what is the sound? Phonics, which is the ability to connect letters and sounds. Name? Sound? And finally, there's reading with fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. What are covers? Correct. OK, finger on the next word. In the past, okay. some reading Here programs focused just on comprehension yeah, sure. at the expense of decoding. By, uh, and this proved disastrous, okay. especially for poor, at-risk really kids. When a student picks up a book, if they can't I mean, break the code of phonics, they're not going to read the story. And what Reading First promotes is that Where students in neighborhoods of poverty need more explicit is. instruction. Everybody, what that word is did, what word? Did. Everybody sound out. Did. Get ready. Did. did. Again, get ready. This is a uh, high poverty area. Um, we're 100% uh, free breakfast and lunch. I think if you took the statistics, it's about 96% actu actually of our student body that, is, uh, that would qualify for free lunch. We are 65% African American, 25% Hispanic, and then the other 10% makes up uh, Pacific Islanders, Asian, Native American, and white. Money. Money. That word is everybody buying. What? Research shows that children who don't learn to fluently decode when they start elementary school are set up for educational failure. What we say? Buying. If these guys were not successful readers when they were younger, it's hard to catch them when they're in fifth and sixth grade to get them to do the basic, what you would term as a second or third grade curriculum reading level and knowing that they cannot decode words because they don't know that the beginning part is a prefix or that the middle part is the root word, the ending word is a suffix. They don't know those rules if they didn't get that core program ahead of time. And you have this uh, group of kids that just won't move. Despite some reservations, Humboldt teachers set about getting all their students to read. This meant both placing students in groups based on their ability rather than age, and testing kids every week to gauge their progress. You're wanting to be sure that they learn that they are at mastery from lesson to lesson, because if they're not, they will fall behind and they will feel frustrated. In, in trying to keep up with the group. And we find in research that the primary motivator for children is the probability of success. Hold on. Five, six, seven, eight whole points. Gradually, so teachers, happy. parents, and students began to experience success in the classroom. Get ready? Rock. Okay, fast. 
fast? Rock. What word? Rock. Yes, rock. Ooh, you guys are smart. I'm giving Clarissa a point, and everyone gets a point. Good job. One person who noticed a change in her struggling grandson is Mrs. Parrish. CJ was very slow at reading, a little embarrassed about it, and when he started getting this help, he just soared. Last year, as a fourth grader, he surpassed the benchmark for reading for his grade. He was so proud of himself. He was the talk of the school. <laughs> and her first grade granddaughter, Ariana, is already reading with fluency. My granddaughter just started reading on her own. In fact, she got her library card a week ago, and she's already read 10 books. They are due back today, and she wants 10 more. And she will pick up a book by herself and read it which is wonderful. She has a confidence to just you know, do it herself. And so I think that this program for the children is just wonderful because they need that. And sometimes a lot of parents don't have time to read to their children or to have magazines for them or even have a newspaper for them. But the program here gives them the confidence to do it. And they just sail from here. Year by year, scores improved at Humboldt. Selena, nice reading. You've been practicing a lot, huh? By 2006, Nearly four out of five students were reading on grade level. We were in the classroom one day and Mr. Meskimen was wanting me to know that we were going to have a party for the kids. And I said, oh, what? And so he spelled P-A-R-T-Y. And some of the kids looked over at him like, huh? What? And one of them kept saying it to herself, P -A -R -T -Y. Miss Audrey, did Mr. Messerman say we're going to have a party? I said, no, he didn't say it. He spelled it. But see, Mr. Messerman, you can't be sneaky with him because they figured it out. And at the end of the year, when you see those kids go way up in their reading achievement, you remember where they were at at the beginning and where you were at at the beginning with them. And then you think, oh, my gosh, you know, we actually did it. That is what gives the teacher the encouragement to keep pushing ahead. We have our ups and downs, but at the end of the day, we all respect and love the country. Humboldt's reputation has changed. It's no longer seen as a failing school. By putting reading first, they have given their children the opportunity to succeed. Well, Humboldt is, we always say, like a diamond in the raw. It's came through a lot of evolution, a lot of growth of uh, the student body, the community. Right now, Humboldt is thriving. Uh, we're really glad to s still be open. The students are learning, they're improving in their skills, the parents are coming in helping, the teachers are excited. As that continues and grows, Humboldt is just going to continue and we're going to reach that 100% meet and achieve. I just know we are and uh, moving forward. They had a dream that every child could learn to read, and at Humboldt, they made that dream a reality. Yeah.